Shalom, Baruch Abba. Hello, welcome to Sari. My name is Anthony. Thank you so much for joining us. If you have not already, please subscribe. This is an edut, a testimony, and as always, we like to begin by giving honor and esteem to Yahuwah Elohim and to his Ben Adonai Yahushua HaMashiach, who's come along with us on this journey. We're so thankful for him and this time of change that is upon the world now. To those of you who are the Kodeshim out there in the wilderness, I want to thank you for your comments, for your support, and to encourage you to be un unwavering in your commitment to Yahuwah. If you are joining us for the first time, I invite you to watch the first couple of videos as it will give you keen insight into what in the Dute is and how it is to operate. Here in this part of the Adut, religion has come in to see the king behind closed doors. There's some things going on uh, that Yahuwah will begin to address, and there is a powerful message in it for his people. Let's jump right in now. Deborim chapter 29, verse 18 will line up with a star, chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. And Yahuwah does not want uh, his people to participate in any part of this verse, as Haman has come into the king's court now and begins to set an example of what not to do in the presence of the king, so that there may not be among you man or woman or family, or tribe. Elohim does not want any of his people anywhere near this type of arrogance, so that there may not be among you is a warning. And over in a star, Haman begins to speak, and he answered the king for the man whom the king delights to honor. Very important word here, H3366, Yakar was something of value, precious, splendor, or pomp. The verb means to be esteemed, um, to be priced, and be costly to be made precious. This type of honor he wants, whose heart turns away today from Yahuwah Eloheinu. So here we have a person whose heart has turned away from Yahuwah Elohim, and he wants this type of honor. Here the word for heart, lev, is the inner man, the heart, the soul, um, the will, the mind, and knowledge of thinking, the, the conscience with all the emotions and appetites. The word is declaring his heart turns away from Yahuwah Elohim. This is the problem. Uh, with Haman. His own will has turned away from Yahuwah Elohim. He made that choice when he disassociated himself from that covenant. And this is what he wants still. Let a royal robe be brought which the king has worn. That word there for royal, age 44, 38, 38 is the Malkut, the sovereign power, is what he wanted, the sovereign power. So this is no ordinary robe. He wanted that top spot for himself because the verb Malach means to become king or queen. To be made king or queen is the verb, the understanding here. This is what's going on. It's what he wants now, even though his heart has turned away from Yahuwah Eloheinu. On which the king uh, had worn, has worn. So here he wants to be like the Most High with all the guard. And in the next line of survey, declares what he wants it for to go and serve the mighty ones of these nations. To go and serve. 
the mighty ones of this nation. The mark of the accusative is on the mighty ones of the nations. At um, Elohim, at Hagoyim. So he's going to serve their understanding of everlasting life. In other words, whatever they are presenting to know regarding everlasting life. He's going to uh, serve them with the things that Elohim has given. Serve those nations. Their understanding of everlasting life. Not what Yahuwah Elohim has set up for everlasting life. He's going to serve some other mighty ones. And over in the star it declares, and a horse on which the king has ridden. <laughs> uh, that word for horse, H5483, was Seuss. Seuss is a horse. It also means to swallow swiftly, is in the definition. From an unused root meaning to skip for joy. And this is now the vehicle used to carry the news of his kingship. The horse represents the strength to run into battle, only he is exalting the victory as some other form of supernatural force and giving credit to it for the victory because it says in the survey line he's going to serve other mighty ones. The dictionary defines swallow when used with an object as to put up with or meekly accept something insulting or unwelcome or believe something unquestioning, unquestioningly, a lie or unlikely assertion. So the horse here symbolically represents something these people want you to believe without questions. You know, don't ask no questions. Don't do no research, just believe it. This is what Haman people want. You know, I say forget you and the horse you rode in on. You know, that's like the head knowledge of knowing of Elohim and the covenant and worshiping by declaring uh, the blasphemous name of God among the nations to promote yourself. Lead nations astray. So you stay on top. You know, so you see how this is selfish now. Don't ask no questions or knowing Elohim in the covenant and worshiping uh, some abomination called Allah among the nations. You know, this is conceited and excessive pride. They right over there and got it wrong. Uh, he's going to give the victory to something other than Elohim, whose presence he read about to get the idea in the first place. Don't ask no questions. We already know he was an imposter posing as the people of scripture. We know Mordecai's people were being systematically and disproportionately exterminated in the story because they failed to understand the scripture of truth and see the hand of Yahuwah playing out in this historic time of change for the whole world. You know, this affected the world then. And if you are practicing social distancing, so it is in our time now. Well, I got questions. You know, why are the cities of refuge on either side of the Yarden River? And there were six of them. Uh, everywhere they were supposed to be is under Muslim control. In the land of Israel today, I got questions. Along with the place where the presence of Yahuwah dwelt in Yerushalayim, or the Temple Mount. You know, why do Muslims control that after 70 years of perpetrating the fraud? Fraud, I got questions. Stones were set up in Nablus by Yahushua, according to the word of Yahuwah. Why is there no fear of Elohim in the valley where the tribes once stood? Muslims got that too. Got questions. And don't worry, Islam. When they go, you go. As I mentioned before in the last couple of videos, 
Jewish doctrine and the people who follow that deception are today's Haman and the African Americans who speak English but apparently can't read it are the true people of the book. And until they turn back to Yahuwah Elohim, more people are going to die in the worst way, the worst possible death, because Haman is going to serve and disrespect some other form of life called everlasting death. Other mighty ones. And he's going to do it on this horse, just like it reads in the revelations and in the survey lines. For the man whom the king delights to honor, whose heart turns away from Yahuwah Elohenu, let a royal robe be brought, which the king has worn now, to serve the mighty ones of these nations, and a horse on which the king has written. It doesn't get any clearer than the word of scripture itself. That's what I see. Then and now. Now what about you? Hasidic Judaism, time to come down off that horse. Walking around here in those tall black hats and trench coats, looking more like a gangster than a spiritual leader. And over in Deborim, Yahuwah said that there may not be among you, you who are hearing here now a root bearing bitterness or wormwood. A root, that word there for root, H8328 was sheresh. It means root or lateral, meaning side to side here. Elohim, one minute, God the next. Allah, one minute, uh, God the next. You know, the lateral move, some people do this at the office where they take another job uh, doing work for the same money. They made a lateral move. Now, this is what Haman seeks to do once he gets that robe, that crown, and that horse. The verb Sharesh, uh, H8327, means to uproot, to deal with the root. So he's going to deal with the root of the everlasting setup here by Yahuwah. He's going to try to get rid of everything. The root to be uprooted or rooted out. It's going to root out everything in the root. And this is the way he destroys Yahuwah Elohim. And, of course, there is that little matter of those letters that he wrote to destroy the tribe of Yehudah. He gets rid of the whole covenant with that move. The word Sharesh is used figuratively of people involving firmness and permanence. Something firm, grounded, so as not to let go of. The Lord does not want this for his people at all. At all. Here the word for bitterness in the survey line, H70, uh, 219. We just looked at the word, that root bearing word there. Uh, this thing is a bitterness. It is Rosh. Rosh is a masculine noun uh, that means gall, venom, poison. 872.19, that word for Rosh there. Venom. The root is the same as 72.18. Rosh, also a masculine noun, meaning the head of man or beast. The top of the mountain, the height of the stars. Reading the, the definitions on the concordance there, the chief of all things established, the sum or the best, the choicest part from the beginning exceeding the limits of pride so as to be seated as the creator himself, root bearing bitterness. That's what's going on there. Or wormwood. Wormwood here is a feminine noun, so this is going to be something for everybody. It represents something that is birthed out of or produces offspring. In this case, from bitterness. You and your children. And it is from an unused verb meaning to curse. Bitterness. Now, Elohim doesn't want that for his people. So step aside and let Haman come on in.
And over in the star, it plays out, which has a royal crest placed on its head. A royal crest placed on its head. We looked at that word for royal. This is all about uh, the kingdom here. That's what he wants. You know, half of it was already on the table. He wants the whole thing here now. Crest is a keter. The, the Hebrew word there is keter. It is a crown. The verb means to encircle or surround this crown. This is something you set on top of the head now, which is what Haman really wanted because he knew that there was no, no room for anything else inside his head because of the abundance of arrogance and conceit that seemed to grow in his mind. So he needed that halo to go around his head now. That halo is placed on his head. Here, the word for, for uh, Rosh is 7218. This is uh, the beginning of something new that represented the heights of the stars, the best of everything, the choices, top shelf, unlimited power. It's what he wants to set up and bestowed on his head. It's what he wants. Um, in fact, the same word for bitterness is used here in the survey line for head. Uh, it is Rosh. It's the same word. Uh, one is the verb and the other is not. This type of perceived royalty does not sit well on the type of a bitter attitude that describes Haman. Doesn't sit well with that. Attitude not right. Deborah 29, 19. We will look at how it aligns with a star chapter 6, verse 9. And we see, of course, there is a footnote. So provisions are already made through the word written by Moshe for the people for these special times now. And the reason why he does it, so that it may not happen when he hears the words of this curse. So that it may not happen. Yeah, let him come on in with all his big ideas because they are not going to happen. To Muslims, Christians, and Jews alike, any idea you have that does not coincide with this covenant, is not going to happen. So be careful what you speak because you can't put your foot in your mouth. Here we're going to look at a few things that's not going to happen in the covenant as it plays out not only here in the story but serves as a warning to all who seem to think once they are saved it cannot be taken away. When he hears the words of this curse, this curse Ha'Allah Hazot, mark of the accusative, is there on the curse, the oath of the covenant. It is the curse of the oath. It is the everlasting curse. The mark of the accusative is there on this. This is a threat of concern because it threatens everlasting life and should be taken seriously regardless of how you feel in your heart, you might think you're going to make it, but you better look at those guidelines and follow those types of guidelines. And over in the star, he declares, then let this robe and horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes. most noble princes. He wants the robe and everything delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes. That word for princes here, interesting uh, word here, H8269, we're going to look at that. That word there is Sar. Sar is a ruler, it's a leader, it's a chief, a chieftain, and an official. Haman was all of those in the story. And all of these are listed in the definition. For 8269, he was an official under the king, overseer of other official classes, 
This is all in the definition for 8269. For those of you who are taking notes, Prince's head, he was the head of the re religious office. Of course, he wrote those letters, put those into circulation. He was the head of elders, of representatives of the leaders of the people. He was one of those two. The ones closely uh, related to Orthodox Judaism here in our time. That type of leader is what he was. He was a, a merchant prince. Merchant prince. Uh, in the definition, it is of rank and dignity. Yes, he was truly buying and selling religion. It's what he did. A man-made established order of worship that uses the Ibrit scripture of truth to produce a blasphemous deception of what people sacrilegiously hold as truth. This is what religion is and does, all of them. And he just set himself up under the curse of the oath in the top line of survey above. Because all of what he just asked for, thinking it was for him, now has to be delivered by someone with that stature that only he holds. He's putting his foot in his mouth because of conceit and arrogance and greed. And so Moshe uh, says, says why? Says why over in Deborim that he blesses himself in his heart. Self-will. You hear it all the time in today's religion. Christians notoriously walk around thinking they are blessed and highly favored. Blessed and highly favored. Ask them by who, and their heart would not lift, lift up to speak the name of Yahuwah Elohim. It's self-will. Something they came up with themselves, they got from one of those preachers, one of those bishops, you know, the Pope. Here Haman does the same thing. Here's how that he may array the man whom the king delights to honor. That word for array there was yakar, and it means to esteem, to be prized, be highly valuable and be precious, to be costly, to be appraised, honored with splendor and pomp. This is a heart condition enlarged by pride, and arrogance. But here that he may array the man. The mark of the accusative is on the man. The mark of the accusative is on the man. Et haish. The mark of the accusative is there. So we're talking about something precious here that the king wishes to honor. This honor is an everlasting honor, so this is no small thing. Here's the problem, and where Haman put his foot in his mouth to be cursed. He cannot be the king's most noble prince and the one the king delights to honor at the same time, here in the survey line. He was already the most noble prince because of the definition for Tsar, which covered almost every office. Yeah, he was as high as he was going to go. There was nowhere left for him to go but lateral or down. Because there's only one seat at the top, and he was not going to get that. Because it is already taken in the top survey line. Uh, it's not going to happen. So by definition, he has to be the one to array, the man whom the king delights to honor. And you can be sure with that kind of pride, he's not going to like the fact that he came that day into the presence of the king. So we have to let him come in some more.
Deborim, and this is what he speaks, saying, I shall have peace even though I follow the dictates of my heart. Even though I follow the dictates of my heart. So we have to look at this word for dictates here. Why did they mess with this? Uh, in all of the five books of Devarim, there's only like three changes that were made. This particular one here is interesting, and we'll look at it. Put the footnote on the screen, and there it is. It reads, or stubbornness. The dictionary definition for dictates is a verb, or as a verb, is to lie, lay down authoritatively, to prescribe. In the dictionary definition, here the word that gives an example in, in the sentence of to lay down something authoritatively and prescribe. The SARS attempts to dictate policy. Interesting because SAR just happens to be the Ibrit word for prince here in the plumb line of survey. Uh, there it is for notable princes. There is a second part of that dictionary word for dictates. We will get to that in a moment. The Ibrit word there in the concordance is She'erut, H8307, She'erut. It is the Ibrit word and it means stubbornness, firmness, and hardness. That's what it means. The root is 8324, Sha'ar. The verb is used in the sense of twisted, and it means to be an enemy. This testifies to who made that change. This testifies to who made that change. It was a twisted enemy, and whoever made this change spoke English because the King James Version does not have the change here. It doesn't have that change. This just came along. So you can go and compare the change between the two. It did them no good. It was a lateral move. Just gives the word more fire to burn them with. For changing the word of Yahuwah. Now why did they just choose that particular word right there? That particular word. This is a long chapter and that's the only change and the change they made uh, was useless. And this now helps uh, and represents the, text, the texture, the texture of the same type of root found in the previous frame for root bearing bitterness. The root here now is she'e root, listed here stubborn, hard, and firm. They want to dictate how the Torah is worded now. They're dictating how the Torah is worded now. Seldom you see a change that bold. This is a root-bearing bitterness. The word for root used in root-bearing bitterness is sheresh. We looked at it earlier. It means root or lateral, meaning side to side. You see this done in politics to govern the people. They just find one word that everyone can agree with to promote worldwide worship. And no one thought to look into the abrupt origins of scripture. In fact, this characterizes the type of dictatorship on display in the story. Stubborn, firm, and harsh. I shall have peace even though I follow the dictates of my heart. meaning of the abrupt word for Sheru. Now here's some more dictating to use the other part of the dictionary definition that we read earlier for dictate that reads uh, to control or decisively affect, to determine. And so this is what they're trying to do here. He's decisively affecting the parade. 
over in the star, then parade him on horseback through the city square. Parade him on horseback. So <laughs> now you want to parade. After that type of disrespect, you want to parade. Religion has done nothing of what Yahuwah asked them to do. And you want to parade. He knows my heart. That's what they say. Yeah, I think he knows your heart now. You know, that parade stuff is show sure enough not going to happen. We're talking about some things that's not going to happen here. And you forget all about that horse ride, too. You don't want to do no work. You know, this is the Christian side of Haman family. The law was done away with at the cross. That lie. Uh, let me warn you, uh, belief without works is dead. And you want someone to carry your dead ass in a parade. You know, only in a funeral. Otherwise, that's not going to happen. Or as it is written, so that it may not happen. Talking about that parade on horseback. And since horse is in the line of survey, the definition for ass comes into play. And I quote from the dictionary for the sake of the precept. An animal of the horse family, which is typically smaller than a horse and has longer ears and a brain called. Also a foolish and stupid person. It's the reading on that definition there. Haman's Christian side of the family. Everyone bearing that root Christianity type of root there. Get up out of here. It's not going to happen. Pray, parade them around the city square. The city square is a broad open place. The verb means to grow wide or make large. You know, that's out there where the protests are now. You know, he wants everyone to see him. The verb means to be excited, to be triumphant to rouse oneself, to awake and awaken and excite through the idea of opening the eyes. Wow! All of this <laughs> in order to be exposed, to be bared and laid bare, just soaking it up. That's the definition. Uh, talking about the city square here. This is how he attempts to control and decisively affect what he thinks is for him without a doubt. He is attempting to affect the outcome of something dictated. But like the word says, that it may not happen. <laughs> now that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Uh, Islam, you too. Uh, because they have a city square. They walk around down in Mecca. It's a big place uh, walking around that little box called the Kaaba. It's Rubik's Cube. It's Rubik's Cube. Figure that out. Who's inside? Or a combination of lies conjured up to rob the people of money and steal eternal life. And they just fall for it. Don't ask no questions. Just something they do. Christianity gave birth to Islam gave birth to this type of ridiculous attitude. It's the same religious practice with different words and twisted beliefs. A lateral move. They both came in around the same time in history and have identical perspectives on the seed of Abraham in the city square. It's not going to happen. None of that stuff's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And Yahuwah declares as though the drunkard could be included with the soap, you know, the drunkard. H7301, Rawa means to be satiated or saturated, have a drink or one's fill, intoxicated or watered abundantly, abundantly. So he's full of it. Now he must be drunk. Think he's going to get all that? Mm -mm. Think he's going to get all of this, a parade on horseback, through the city square, after what he said about the covenant of Yahuwah Elohim. This is without a doubt not going to happen. It's not going to happen. 
just like I said in the top survey line, it's not going to happen. He can forget about that word, peace too. Peace too. This is definitely not going to happen. You know, fill up the cup and drink it down. Everlasting torment is determined against the religious, religious opposition of the covenant. No rest. You know, the nerve of some people want all of this. Hmm. Like they're going to be included with the sober. Here the mark of the accusative is on the sober. Et ha sabea. Same means to be thirsty or thirst. So this is someone who has not been drinking. That is to say, showing respect fear, and humility. For not only the great name of Yahuwah, Elohim, but given the same level of respect for his word in scripture, which the drunkard will fail to do. The difference between the two is noted. This one is thirsty, meaning he is sober, and the other is a drunkard, full of shenanigans. And proclaim before him, thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delights to honor. Now, wipe my brow now. I'm starting to get angry here, these people here. To proclaim. So, so now he wants a song to go with the dance and the parade. You, you can forget about it. It's not going to happen. You lost your mind. If you think that's going to happen. Mm-mm. It's definitely not going to happen for him and anybody that thinks like him. All of religion thinks just like him, and the evidence is overwhelming and clear. They all have this Torah in their teaching and understanding and refuse to follow it. It's that simple. Because there's nothing new under the sun. They're all doing the same thing a different way. And that is the wrong way. For those of you out there who are not part of any religious organization, you know, proclaim this message. Put them to shame. Everything you need is right here in the survey lines of this testimony, all through it. You know, show them the reason for their destruction. Proclaim that. Proclaim that. Because destruction, that's the only thing that's going to happen here. You know, because everything else is not going to happen. It's like that survey line said. Deborah 29, 20 will line up with the star, chapter 6, verse 10. And so Yahuwah begins to speak. He said, Yahuwah will not spare him. For then the anger of Yahuwah and his jealousy would burn against that man. Yahuwah will not spare him. That word for spare is salach. H5545, and it means to forgive. Ain't no forgiveness there. Mm -mm. Yahuwah will not forgive him. So to the Christians, the Jews, and the Muslims, and any other crazy ideas out there, there is no forgiveness for dishonoring this great name and not having respect for this covenant. So I recommend you take another look at this word. And don't forget to put your mask on. Because not being able to breathe puts you a lot closer to death than you think. For the anger of Yahuwah. Here the word for anger is up. This is just a two-letter word, and it describes the nose on his face as angry and breathing hard, very displeased. Also the word for jealousy here, uh, H7068. Kenah. This is an enthusiastic anger against adversaries regarding his established style of worship. As it is written in the second commandment that he is a jealous Ah, Yahuwah Elohecha Al-Khanah. However, this 
anger is best displayed in, uh, we're going to go to uh, Sephaniah, chapter 3, Sephaniah, chapter 3, Yahuwah has treasured, uh, you might know him as uh, Zephaniah, we're going to read that now, regarding this anger, and this jealousy that has gotten him worked up now because this fool don't come up in there uh, thinking all of these crazy thoughts. And uh, he's getting ready to get dealt with. Seven Yah, chapter 3. I'll uh, read this. It'll be, um, I'm going to start at verse 1 and read down. Woe to her who is rebellious and polluted to the oppressing city. She has not obeyed his voice. She has not received correction. She has not trusted in Yahuwah. She has not drawn near to her Elohim. Her princes in her midst are roaring lions and her judges are evening wolves that leave not a bone till morning. Her prophets are insolent arrogant, showing lack of respect here, treacherous people, and her priests have polluted the set-apartness. They have done violence to the Torah. Yahuwah is righteous in her midst. He will do no unrighteousness. Every morning he brings justice to light, and he never fails. But the unjust knows no shame. I have cut off the nation, he declares. Their fortresses are devastated. I have made their streets desolate, that's what a virus does, with none passing by, and their cities are destroyed, and there is no one, no inhabitant. I said, surely you will fear me, you will receive instruction that her dwelling would not be cut off, despite everything for which I punished her, but they rose up early and corrupted all their deeds. Therefore, wait for me, says Yahuwah, until the day I rise up for plunder. This word for plunder here identifies with an attack that is going to cause a major change globally in religion and politics that will continue from that point on. They are the exact same letters in all the verb forms that spell edut is what I'm giving you here. My determination is to gather the nations to my assembly of kingdoms, to pour on them my indignation, all my fierce anger. All the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. These are two words in the survey line. For then I will restore to the peoples a pure language, pure tongue, that they may call on the name of Yahuwah, to serve him with one accord. That's everybody. That's what that word one accord means, y'all. From beyond the rivers of Cush, my worshipers, the daughters of my dispersed ones, shall bring my offering. And that day you shall not be shamed for any of your deeds in which you transgress against me. It's going to bring us back. For then I will take away from your midst those who rejoice in your pride, and you shall no longer be haughty in my Kodesh mountain. I will leave in your midst a meek and humble people, and they shall trust in the name of Yahuwah. The remnant of Yisrael shall do no unrighteousness and speak no lies, nor shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. There are some tongues of fire for you. For they shall feed their flocks and lie down, and no one shall make them afraid. So sing, O daughter of Sion, and shout, O Yisrael, and be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Yerushalayim. Yahuwah has taken away your judgments, and he has cast out your enemy. The king of Yisrael, Yahuwah, is in your midst. You shall see disaster no more. And that day it shall be said to Yerushalayim, do not fear, Sion. 
Let not your hands be weak. Yahuwah, Elohecha, in your midst, the mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. I will gather those who sorrow over the appointed assembly, who are among you, to whom its reproach is a burden. Indeed it is. Behold, at that time I will deal with all who afflict you. I will save the lame and gather those who were driven out. I will appoint them for praise and fame in every land where they were put to shame. It's good news right there. At that time, I will bring you back. Even at the, even at the time, I gather you. For I will give you fame and praise among all the peoples of the earth when I return your captives before your eyes, says Yahuwah. Amen. Amen. This is the type of anger and jealousy he has for that man right there in the survey line. Against that man. And over in the star, he starts to pour it out on him. Starts to pour it on him. That man, Haish, uh, uh, the man, that sickness part of the verb, that man of lawlessness who's here now. Uh, who's he talking about? Over in the star, the king said, Haman. Haman. That's who that man is in the story. King represents Yahuwah in the top line of survey. Would not spare him. That man, Haman, points him right out. Yes, it does. Says over in the star, the king said to Haman, that man, he said, hurry, take the robe and the horse, as you have suggested, and do so for Mordecai. Mm. The Yahudi who sits within the king's gate. That had to hurt. That had to hurt. Had to hurt. I know it hurt. The mark of the accusative is on the robe and the horse. At Halabush, we're at Hasus. Here we see a double edged sword begin to come into play here. Labush, the robe represents the garments of redemption to everlasting life. Redemption to everlasting life's good news right there. Also, deliverance to restored earthly favor. Restored earthly favor. So not only is Mordecai getting saved, he's going to get some earthly favor too. Double-edged sword there. He was clothed. Y'all gave him something to wear. The horse represents everlasting strength and power to carry you uh, somewhere you could not go on your own. And so the earthly vehicle used to carry the rider into battle victoriously. You know, because of the mark of the accusative is there on both of those things. This signifies a supernatural presence at work from above. And as you can see, Yahuwah is in the top line of survey there in, in Dabarim. Yeah, so he, he got uh, everlasting life and he got a horse to ride victoriously into battle with the double-edged sword there on the horse. Do as you have suggested. If you recall in verse 4, covered in one of the prior videos, uh, you can go see it. Uh, he, Haman, was going to suggest... <laughs> that Mordecai be hanged on the gallows. Well, here, he never gets those words out of his mouth. He was coming in there to do that. Not only that, uh, do so for Mordecai, who sits in the king's gate. It sits in the king's gate. Uh, the word there for gate uh, coming up here, Okay, let's just let me scroll down a little bit here. We're talking about the word for gate here. Who sits, more? Uh, do so for Mordecai, who sits 
within the king's gate. Then the king, king's reasoning, you know, coming up in here trying to dictate something. You know, uh, H8179 means marketplace or palace. The verb means reasoning or understanding. The king's reasoning and understanding. Do so. Take the robe and the horse and give it to someone who sits and takes the time to study and understand what I have said out of my mouth. Mordecai, little man. And by the way, hurry up. That's what he's saying here. You know, so what you are witnessing now in the word is a spiritual beatdown by Yahuwah Elohim and the top survey line because of this fool coming up in here trying to dictate. You know, take the robe and the horse and do so for someone who recognizes what it means to be set apart when speaking my name, the Yahudi, right here in the survey line. And by the way, hurry up. He just got kicked. Mm -hmm. Dictate that. You know, take the robe and the horse and do so for the least among the people who sits within my reasoning and understanding so that everyone can see what can happen for them if they honor the king by remembering the great and awesome name of Yahuwah Elohim and tremble in his presence. Hurry up. That's another body blow. You know, dictate that. Take the robe and the horse and do so for them and hurry up. He just got slapped because of his judgment. It's not finished. There it is. It's written right there, black and white. Religion, religion dictates nothing in the presence of the king. Coming up in here talking about some damn Talmud. You know, lost your mind. Babylonian Talmud at that. Hmm. And you all continue so after you don't slap him. He said, and every curse that is written in this book would settle on him. And Yahuwah would blot out his name from under the Shemaim. There's some double-edged sword for you. And his name right up in the middle of it. You know, here the mark of the accusative is on the curse. You know, H423, at Ha'ala. Are you going to holler? Yeah. It's a curse from Elohim. The dictionary defines it as a solemn utterance intended to invoke a supernatural power to inflict harm or punishment on someone for something coming up in here. Mm. A cause for harm or misery. Yeah, dictate that. You know, come up in here, dictate nothing. Mm. Now, uh, one other thing, this, now this is not really good. Um, <laughs> Because that would put Haman in the line to be in the same predicament he put a star's people in, causing all those protests, pain, suffering, and sorrow. That's what's going to settle on him now. The word for settle means to stretch out on. It means to stretch out on. That means the curse is going to be right at home dealing with him. Stretch right out on him. And this is what this is what grace will get you. This is what grace will get you. Get you killed. Here's how it works. If you are being systematically oppressed, beaten down, and plundered, and because you live through it, time and time again, <laughs> all you can think to say is grace got me through. No not what got you through. You just didn't get hit hard enough. That's what got you through. Because it is a setup for something else much worse. And it's called being sick and tired of getting worse. That's what it's called. That, that kind of curse there. Sick and tired of things getting worse. It's called the curse of Christianity. You know, to the people out there, when you have done all that you can possibly do and have covered all the bases, you know, if you think your life matter, and you still get the worst scenario out of everybody else repeatedly, <laughs> even in a pandemic, then this, my friend, is called a curse. It is the perverted mind or Christianity that does not seek to find out why this keeps happening. 
here in America. It has settled in. Talking about that curse. Near to the point of death. Stretch right out. 400 years. Mm -hmm. He's going to wish he had never opened his mouth. Better to be quiet and thought of food than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. Islam. And furthermore, leave nothing undone of all that you have spoken. And before I move on here, let me uh, understand, get some understanding on the blotting out of his name here. Uh, here, and Yahuwah would, would blot out his name from under the Shemaim. Got to go back and get that there. He got me angry and worked up too. Blot out his name. The mark of the accusative is on the name. Et Shemo. Mm -hmm. Blot out his name. Yeah, all of religion is doomed. Yeah, you can't lose your salvation. You don't worship according to the standards laid out in the Torah, and that's for everybody. does not matter who or where you are. Here in the survey line, because Haman rejects Yahuwah, that's what he's going to get. And what everyone following world religion, all of them can expect the same thing. And that is to have your name blotted out. Whosoever has an ear, hear this. If you are in prayer, it is highly recommended you follow the instructions laid out in Torah. Because religion will dictate nothing regarding everlasting life. Keep the oath, follow the instructions. Haman had the mark on his name and a star in chapter 3, verse 1, when he was promoted. Here in the survey line, when his time is finished on earth, then he's going to be blotted out from under the Shemaim where Yahuwah is in the survey line, literally in the same sentence. He's going to see to it personally. It's right there. Every curse, he's going to get the curse first, and then he's going to get his name blotted out. It's right there. He's going to see to it. Yeah, but there is a little matter of suffering and misery that has to play out first because over in the star, the king is still calling the shots. And so here, here he calls some more shot. He tells him, leave nothing undone of all that you have spoken. So this is a picture of how Yah is going to take the crown of magnificence from the Goe, that's Haman's name, magnificence, and bestow it upon the people who sit and study according to his reasoning and understanding written in the Torah who have made up their mind to let go of the religious world order we live in now, especially the big three, and change according to what was written in the Ibri. We have to restore the ancient landmarks, y'all. That's what we have to do. Change the prayers, change the speaking, and what you are promoting out there. You know, if you want your life to matter, then his life must matter. In fact, life is in his name. Can't do away with that. He's not going anywhere. Certainly, uh, we are. We're going to have to bow before him. You know, to restore the great and awesome name of Yahuwah Elohim and offer the Lamb of Elohim, Adonai Yahushua HaMashiach, as a peace offering. Yeah, offer that Lamb there. It's the story of the Lamb. It's a testimony of him. And to all uh, out in the wilderness, with all those different names for Hamashiach, it is Yahushua. It is Yahushua. One name, one king. To Jews, Christians, and Muslims everywhere, now is the time to make peace. Now is the time to make peace. You know, if six months of a pandemic isn't time to make peace. I don't know when it is. 
maybe six more. Now it's time to make peace because you all have this knowledge and your understanding. If you are sitting under any of those three thought processes, serve them notice and leave now. Hurry up. Time running out because no one is coming in the presence of the king dictating nothing. So best to have a seat in the gate and recognize. Amen. Thank you so much for watching with us here at Sari. Remember Adonai Yahushua is the same yesterday, today, and forever. To those of you out there in the wilderness, hold fast to what you have. The time of restoration continues to draw near. If you have any questions concerning uh, the message and what was given, please don't hesitate to email us or contact us. We'd love to hear from you. Again, Shalom. Nature. See you later.